So today I wanted to show you how to sew after we have stamped our fabric with our quilt stamps. And I am starting with the center and all we do is take our piece and match it to the center and we are going to sew the from the inside sew lines, dash lines, to the other corner. And I'm just gonna follow that line. And what I do is reverse back a little a few stitches. That will knot it. Since we can't run the threads off like we would in conventional quilting with squares. And reverse it when you get to the other corner. And then I just simply pull that out and you will fold it to the outside so that both seam edges are folded to the outside. You will grab your next piece, match that up, and go to the corner there. Give it a little tug to make sure that seam is out of the way. Sew forward a few stitches, back a couple stitches, sew to the corner, and then reverse back a couple. So on these, when I'm starting a new block and you have a good center block that's just a hexagon like this, I just continue to sew all the way around and then I will trim my threads afterwards, sewing a piece on all six sides of that center. And reverse back. When you come to the last piece of the set that you're sewing on the center, you just want to make sure that you're got it evenly matched up to those outside edges and that the seams are to the outside and just give that corner a tug there. And then come back to the end, reverse back. And I just sort of tugged that if you saw that with my finger. And then at this point, then what I do is just turn this out and trim these extra threads here like this. So once all six of those are on, then what we're going to do is we're going to sew the common sides of that layer around the center. And we just turn out, hold those seams to the outside, pull that back so all those seams are not going to be crossed over. Start at the corner, so forward a couple, reverse back, and then back to the corner and reverse back. And at this point, I usually have several blocks going at a time and, and I will continue to feed through blocks as I do each one of these adjoining seams. So after we have sewn the last adjacent edge, we will trim that up, threads off, and then we are ready to start the next layer of color. So I do this like I did the center part where I'm going to add my pieces as I go around the entire outside and trim my threads after all 12 of those are on. So I'm just folding it and fold it so that seam stays to the outside and then this piece is going to be in here like so. So I just place it up against the edges, each of those dash lines against the edges of the seams on those two edges. And then just proceed to work my way around the outside, adding pieces as I go 
Always remembering to sew forward, so reverse back as you are at the corners. sure those seams are pulled to the outside of where you're sewing. You can always sort of feel that with your hands and know if that seam's tucked under the wrong direction. When you've come to where you are sewn that last piece on, trim those threads there and it should look something like this and what I do is just flip it over and again trim up the threads on the corners trimming off the excess So after all of those are trimmed off, these pieces that sort of fold to the inside now, what we need to do is fold everything out, but we are going to sew this edge. And there will be six edges like that that you will need to sew. And again, all you're doing is rotating that piece around so your edges are straight and you're sort of butting up against the seam on each end there. So on these seams that we're sewing on the inside edge I find it easily easier to have five or six units going at the same time and feed one set in after the other. So I would sew this and pull my threads back out and then grab my next block I'm working on and sew that through and then trim my threads in between as I finish that set of five or six. And then the same thing. So now as we finish this inside edge we have the adjoining colors that we have those seams to finish and I find again that it's easier to feed them in in a one after the other than trying to go around the outside the threads just sort of get tangled at that point This is where I want to demonstrate what I do if I've over sewn. So as I went to match up these two seams, you can see that I've over sewn by just one stitch. So I always keep a seam ripper handy and just undo that one stitch and you're usually good to go there. It's loosened it enough to spin it and so, and if you only trim one or two threads if you've over sewn it shouldn't be a problem because you have reverse sewn and that will keep it from just unraveling. So as you finish sewing the last of the side seams there on those outer colored row and trim your threads 